Zero is an awesome free tool for processing your astro images. And in today's lesson, we're going to start out by talking about how you stack images. We're not going to be talking about all the other stuff like color calibrations and background extractions and star processing. That's going to come in future videos. Today, we're just going to talk about how you take many images and stack them into one higher quality image. So here we are in Cyril version 1.2.3, and we're going to get ready to process some uh, astro images today. You can do it in two ways. You can either do the full manual process, or you can use some of the built-in fully automated scripts that exists in, um, in the tool. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do both. We're going to start with the automated. First, you're going to create four folders. You're going to create one called lights, flats, darks, and biases. Look closely how they are named with the plural on the folder name, so make sure you name these correctly. In there, you're of course going to put your lights, your flats, your darks, and your biases. If you're shooting monochrome, then you can only process one filter at a time. That means in here, I'm going to be processing monochrome today, but I will let you know how it differs when you shoot monochrome or color along in this uh, tutorial today. So today I'm just going to be processing my uh, hydrogen filter, but if you're shooting color, it's the same process. Then you just put your color images in here. If you're shooting monochrome, you only put one filter in here at a time. So now we're actually ready to run the automated process. We're first going to jump in here. We're going to click this home button. We're going to make sure that we have set the home folder to the folder with our uh, with our, the folder structure we just created. If you haven't done so, you can click open. You can also see it up here at the top of what folder is currently selected as your home folder. Once you've done that, you go to scripts and you go to OSC processing. Go run scripts. And now it will pretty much do all of it for you. Once it says rejection stacking completed and it's well done, you can go back into your folder and you will now see you have a file here called result.tiff. You also see it's created a number of new folders, one called masters, where it's created your master files. And it's also created a processing folder where it's dungeon processing. We're going to do something similar in a minute, but for now we can just take that results file and drag that in. And to start with, you won't be able to see anything, but if you go down here to linear and put it into an auto stretch, we can now see our stretched image. And this is our stacked image and we're now done with, um, with the channel. Of course, because I'm shooting with, um, with a monochrome camera, I don't have any colors. But again, I'm going to show you how to fix that later. If you're shooting with a color camera, you should have now a color image here stacked, um, calibrated with your calibration frames and everything. That's the easy way to do it. Now, this is the easy way to do it. But if you want a little bit more control and to understand how this process works, um, you can do this manually. And I'm going to show you how you do that as well. Great. So we are back to our setup as before. We have our four folders with our lights and our calibration frames. And we're going to create a new folder just as the script did. And we're going to call this one for process. And this is just going to be where we're going to doing all our work. So now that we're starting the manual process, we're going to jump into the process folder and set that as our home folder. The first thing we need to do is we need to create our master calibration file. So we have our biases, darks and flats, and we need to create the, um, the master file for, for each of these three. We're going to start with the biases. So you can either just click the plus here. It's going to go into your uh, home directory and we're just going to go into our biases we're going to select all our biases and click add you can also drag and drop them in here from a folder if you prefer to do that instead with all of these images in here um, you're going to give them the sequence a name so i'm just going to call mine for bias if you're running a color camera you're going to click the little d bear check mark here if you're running mono, you don't have to check this. What debearing does is it just takes the RGB information and it separates them out into its red, green, and blue components and it processes those manually and then it's going to combine them at the end when you're done. But just remember that you need to debear if you're running color. If you're running mono, you don't need to. So since I'm running mono, I don't need to check mark this and I'm ready to click convert. This should take just a very short amount of time. You can see it took 1.5 seconds for me. And we can now go over here to our sequence, which has now been created. We can make sure we have the bias uh, sequence that we just created. We can open the file list and we can see all our files that's now in our sequence. Now we can skip the calibration tab for now because we're just doing the biases. So they are calibration frames themselves. This still needs to be calibrated. Registration, make sure that the pictures are aligned. But since we have no stars, we don't need to do that. 
So we can actually run straight to, to, uh, to we can use plus, but we're gonna come back to that. We can go straight to stacking. Now for your biases, you're gonna select average stacking with rejection. And for the normalization method, you're gonna select no normalization, pixel rejection, use um, uh, winterized sigma clipping, and I usually just run with the default um, sigma low, sigma high of three. Also just make sure it should be by default that it says all here. You can also just take selected. So if you had some frames you didn't like, you can go into your sequence here, for instance, open files and say, oh, I didn't like that picture. And then you can reject that from your sequence. But in our case, we're just gonna make sure it says all here and click stack. 2.2 seconds later, and we now have our, uh, our what's called bias, bias stacked, and that is our master bias. So if we run in here to process, what I like to do is to find that bias stacked file and just copy it out here to the main folder. And then we're gonna call this one for master bias. We now have our master bias. We can now go back to the conversion tab, select everything, remove it, and we basically repeat this process again for our docs. Remember, of course, to change the, the sequence name here to doc. Again, I'm not gonna debear, I'm gonna convert. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Now, you might think, oh, but docs, shouldn't you retract your, your bias frames? And we're actually not gonna do that. We can save some time by not subtracting the bias frames because what we're then gonna get from our bias is actually a master bias and dark combined into one. So we don't need to subtract the bias. We are gonna need the bias frame in a minute, but again, we're gonna skip over these, go to stacking, and we're gonna use the same settings for the dark as we did with the biases, average stack with rejection, no normalization, and the same sigma clipping setting as before. And we're gonna click stack. Now, because I specifically did not subtract the bias frames from the docs, what I like to do is call this one for master um, doc and bias so that I know, especially if I could type, that I know that this has both dark and bias information in it. Now, the last calibration frame we need is the flats, and they are going to be processed a little bit differently. So we're going to start the same by going in, selecting our flats, adding flats, changing the name, and converting. In here, now we're gonna actually gonna have to do some calibrations on our flats because our flats obviously have a bias level in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the master bias. So we're gonna click here. We're gonna find our master bias we created before. Click open. And make sure, of course, that use biases is, um, um, is checked here. And we also see the output prefix is here set to PP. Make sure you keep uh, in mind what that is set to. If we now jump over here to the sequence tab, you can now see you have, apart from all the bias docs, but you now both have a flat and a PP flat. And that's why it's important to remember. Make sure that is selected because that is our calibrated flat frames. Now we can go to stacking. We're gonna keep the average stacking with rejection, but for normalization, we're gonna put that to multiplicity. And we're going to keep the, um, the, the the sigma clipping settings the same. And around 12 seconds later, we now have our master flat. Now we have all the calibration frames we need, and we are ready to begin to do some actual light processing. So now we go in here, we delete again, and we are now ready to go into our light folder. Now it gets exciting, because now we can take our light frames, we can add them, change the sequence name, to light. Again, if you're running color, remember to click that. I'm not gonna click it because I'm running mono. And as first, you're gonna get just a black image. That's okay. Go into auto stretch. We can see there is a little bit of data in there and we can see that vignetting. We're gonna fix all of that here in just a minute. Now here in the calibration, we are not gonna be using the bias because remember we made this master bias and dark. So we can just go in here and go master bias and dark and bias, select that. And we're also gonna go and select our master flat that we created, put those in there. Now we can go and calibrate with these two settings on. So now that our frames have been calibrated, we're now ready to do the registration. And what the registration does is it compensates for, let's say that the image, there was a slight shift so that this star was over here in another image. It calculates that and it makes sure all the images are proper aligned on top of each other. So if you're, if you're tracking or guiding 
wasn't 100% spot on, the registration can help you ensure that that gets registered completely correctly. Now, you have a number of different options for what you can do for registration here. And to be honest, it's a bit of trial and error. I recommend you start with the one called Global Star Alignment. I also have Deep Sky here in parentheses. For the transformation, it, I would say, so basically this is just how many um, degrees of freedom you want it to have. With Shift, it just has two, so it just checks if the image is moved left to right, up and down. But we can start with the with homography here. So you can see here in my case, this actually went really well. I had 10 frames, we had zero failed and 10 that got registered. So that's great. That means all my frames got registered. If you have frames that failed, you might want to try to go back into your registration here. So what you do is, let's say that I have a, a, a failed frame. Maybe we'd actually try to, to force that. So I'm going to go back and select my PP light. And you can see here that there's now a red border. If I open up the list, you can see here that it also has the X, Y. This is how much the pictures were, were varied. So very, very little compared to the master here. So one pixel up to five or six pixel in the X direction. There's very, very little shift in these. But we can try to go back in and say, say that that didn't work. I can then try to change this to something else. Let's just try to do it with a shift, for instance, just for fun. And that apparently worked as well. My tracking for this was uh, pretty good, it seems. But if you're having issues, try to play around with it here in the registration. You can also try other like um, other methods in here. If you're shooting deep sky objects, of course, make sure you pick one for deep sky. If you're shooting planets, well, then you want to take the one that's for planetary or also called full disk. Uh, so basically pick one that, that kind of fits. Now, once you're done with your registration, you can jump over to the plot tab here. And what you can see here is your frame number down here. So I have 10 frames in my case. So you can see here, one to 10. And then up here, you have what's called the full width half max. And it says here it PX, that means it's in pixels. So that's basically, it's trying to find a small star and then say, okay, this is a point source. How wide is it? So for me, my full width half max is around two and a half. And we can see here for each frame that the frame number two here, was up at 2.73. The lowest I had here was 2.47. So they're actually pretty close. If you have some that are extreme outliers, so if I had one that was maybe, let's say it was four or five in a full with half max, that might indicate that maybe a little bit of cloud or dust would, were, were drifting in when you were taking those frames and you would then be able to go in here and say exclude frame two. I'd also show it if I want to see if there was anything wrong with it, I could I ask it to, uh, to display that frame. And if I didn't like it, if it was a little blurry maybe, I could go and then just exclude that. So basically remove the frames that had the worst full width half max. In my case, this is fine. We can kind of see the green line here is just a plot where instead of the frame number, um, it just shows them in ascending order. So we see the same data basically, but they're just in ascending order now. So now we're ready to stack our um, our images and we're gonna again keep the average stacking with rejection we're gonna change this one over to additive with scaling and we are gonna go keep our sigma clipping setting but now instead of this going all it's gonna go selected so if any frames were um, discarded doing registration because they couldn't get registered or if you manually deselected some of them because you didn't like they were a little blurry or something like that then it's only gonna take those frames that you selected so make sure now that those are the selected frames. Once we're done with that, we can click start stacking. And there we go, 2.8 seconds later, and we have our stacked frame. And now we have, again, our hydrogen channel. Now for me, because I'm doing um, monochrome, I would have to go back and now do the process again. I don't have to do my masters, uh, my master, uh, sorry, my, my bias and darks. I would have to redo the flats if I have flats for that specific channel and also have to do the color image or the, the, the light images again in each of the, the, the three channels that I've taken pictures for. But it's the same process. If you're shooting color, you only have to do this once. If you're shooting monochrome, you have to do this per filter. And with the power of video editing, I now have my master hydrogen, oxygen, and um, sulfur frames ready to go. If you're gonna do monochrome and you now want to take those three separate colors and convert those into a proper color image, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to image processing and we're going to go <clears throat> into RGB compositing. Great. In here, we're going to basically select which colors we want into each channel. 
Now, if we're just going to do a normal Hubble palette, we're just going to take the sulfur channel into the red. We're going to take the oxygen into the green. No, sorry, the hydrogen Aha. into the green. <laughs> and we're going to take the oxygen, of course, and put that into the blue. This, this is on an auto stretch. We can see we're just seeing the red channel. We can go to the RGB and we can see the colors are not really lined up, right? You can see that star is there, there and there. So it's, it's not really proper lined up. So what you're going to do now is you're going to select a star, preferably one that's kind of like on its own, not a too big star. We're going to find a relatively small one that's a bit on its own. Maybe that one there is pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a box around this, make it a little bigger so it has some room to play with here, like so. Just do this by drag and drop. And then when you're over here, you can either go do um, one star registration, that's probably going to be fine for our case, but once you're doing that, click align. Boom. And now it took that square we had here, we took it and say basically that star put the colors in on top of each other. One thing that's good to check before you exit out of this interface is just to go to like the opposite corner of the image and just check if everything down here looks correct or if the colors are fringed out. If they're not fringed out, then you should be okay. Once you're happy with the results, you can click close and you now have your color image. Now this is of course unstretched, I am on an auto stretch right now, but we could go and, and do a, a stretch of this. But that is the basics of how you do stacking of images in Cyril. As I said, in future videos, I'm going to be talking a lot more about how we do background extractions, how we do color calibrations to get more accurate colors. All those kind of things is going to happen in future video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I would love your feedbacks in the comment. We should be able to at least get the blue up so that it's closer. Let's see we're beginning to get somewhere again. Highlight protection. Take a look at this. These are just on a quick test. Look at this. This is my blue channel. Like these are some of the best that I've managed to get in the blue. 